I want to help you guys out a little bit on a couple of the questions on this worksheet. We went through some of it in class and we talked about uh, some levers stuff, but I want to go through the mechanical advantage one more time. Remember, mechanical advantage is actually telling me how many times a machine multiplies my force. So if I wanted to, I have this written over here, I could rewrite the mechanical advantage equation like this. It shows me the output force of a machine is equal to the input force times the mechanical advantage. So this equation is the mechanical advantage equation. It tells me input force times mechanical advantage is output force. Now this says if a machine has a mechanical advantage of less than one. So this number right here, the mechanical advantage is less than one. Well, if that's the case, that means my output force is going to be less than my input force. Whatever force I put in, the machine takes and makes smaller. Of course, since the work done has to remain the same, that means I'm going to get out more distance. So when you have a mechanical advantage less than one, you put in a big force over a short distance, and you get out a small force over a much larger distance. Okay? B is the opposite case. If the output force is or if the mechanical advantage is greater than one, then my input force gets multiplied and made bigger, okay? And that means the distance that the output force moves through is less, right? So I put in a small force through a big distance and get out a big force through a small distance. C, machine has a mechanical advantage equal to one. Well, that means I'm going to get out as much force as I put in, and my output distance will be equal to my input distance. Can a machine reduce the amount of work done? No. That's what we've been saying. If force goes up, distance goes down. If distance goes up, force goes down. Okay. Now, six, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. These are all questions about this lever. Okay. This lever is got a big rock sitting here, weighs 300 newtons, and it's lifted using this lever as shown. Okay. The output arm is 0.1 meters, so I went ahead and labeled that. Here it is. From the fulcrum to where the force is applied is 0.1 meters. The input arm is 0.14, so I labeled that where the input force is applied to the fulcrum is 1.4 meters. Okay? And then it says the input force is 25 newtons. Put that on the end of the lever. So 25 newtons in gets me 300 newtons out. Okay? This lever makes work easier by increasing my force. Right? I'm able to put in only 25 newtons and it's able to lift 300. So it multiplies my force and makes it a little bit bigger, or quite a bit bigger. It says calculate the ideal mechanical advantage of the lever. Well, I took the input arm, 1.4, divided by the output arm, 0.1, and that equals 14. There is no unit. This tells me my force should get multiplied 14 times. Okay. Now, down here, I've got the actual mechanical advantage. And so I come over here to the force, output force, input force, 300 divided by 25. Remember, the newtons cancel. It's a unitless number. This equals 12. Now, you have to be careful because the ideal mechanical advantage is bigger than the actual mechanical advantage and that's because there's actually friction in a lever there's friction at the fulcrum that that you have to work against okay number nine number nine is a little bit of an interesting question because it tells you a distance that you push and we want to know how high the rock will be lifted well if we're talking about distances okay, then we want to use the ideal mechanical advantage equation Ideal mechanical advantage is equal to input distance, or distance in, divided by output distance, distance out. But we already know what this is. We calculated it. It's 14. So 14 equals 0.56 divided by the output distance, however high that rock is going to go. So if I multiply both sides by the output distance, I have d times 14 equals 0.56, and then I can divide both sides by 14 and I get the output distance equals 0 0.04 meters. Okay, so I'm going to push all the way down to here and this thing's going to go up to here. Okay, it doesn't move very far. Energy is conserved. Now, there's another way of doing this that involves work, but it'll give you a slightly different answer. Challenge yourself, see if you can figure out why. Okay. Um, and then we did go through the rest of this in class, so I'm not going to finish it off here. Um, Hopefully this makes sense.